here is another CEO you should know on iHeartRadio. Good morning and welcome to CEOs You Should Know. It's a monthly public service offering of the iHeartRadio stations 97.9 B98, Channel 963, 1021 The Bull, and 107 and Alt 1073. Our guest this morning is Warren Martin. Warren is the executive director of Kansas Strong. It's the Kansas oil and natural gas producers. Warren, welcome to the studio. Thank you very much. It's great to be here. Looking forward to sharing some time with you. Warren, let's just cut right to the chase and get a little bit of your story. Just give me okay. the thumbnail sketch of the Warren Martin story. Uh, thumbnail sketch of the Warren Martin story. I uh, graduated from the great metropolis of Texaco, New Mexico, All and right. uh, I was a youth minister for a couple years, was a missionary for a couple years, and then for about 16 years, I led uh, uh, personal growth and development, think outside box, problem solving, conflict management, those types of workshops as a professional speaker. And 100% of the money I uh, raised from doing that, I took teenagers overseas to do building projects and mission trips. Uh, did that up until about 2008 when the economy tanked. And then, as my wife says, uh, you know, first person everybody fired were speakers like me. Oh, and so, as my wife said, I had to go get a real job. <laughs> um, and so, I uh, went to work for General Tommy Franks, the commanding general that led our forces into Afghanistan and Iraq. He had retired, wanted to start a leadership institute. He was looking for someone who had experience speaking with corporations as well as with teenagers. And I had that unique experience. And so, I worked with General. General Franks, uh, for a number of years as the executive director, helped build his leadership institute, write curriculum, and that kind of stuff. Um, And then really kind of wanted to get my feet back in the ground as a speaker again. Came up to uh, Kansas to work at the Kansas Oil Museum because it was a place where I could uh, uh, work, uh, you know, pretty uh, reasonable schedule and begin developing my speaking engagements. One of the very first speaking engagements I had was to the Eastern Kansas Oil and Gas Association. And speaking to them, the, shortly after that, they started calling me. Some of the members started calling me, asking me if I'd be the director of Kansas Strong. And so here I am as the director of Kansas Strong. Wow, that is a perfect thumbnail sketch. I appreciate that. That's that's awesome to know. And and what a what a great mentor in Tommy Franks. Oh, great guy, a phenomenal guy. I still uh, do some work with General Franks. In fact, just got back from Oklahoma City, uh, leading a four star leadership uh, program, which I started about seven years ago, um, and uh, transformed it. It was a former program that we transformed into leadership. So I just got back from speaking at it, and before that I was down in uh, Midland, Texas, uh, leading a camp down there for General Frank. So I still do a little work with him on the side during my vacation time. Yeah, yeah. Um, But uh, but great guy and uh, certainly a great patriot. Okay, for those who don't know, let's tell them about Kansas Strong. What is Kansas Strong? Kansas Strong is a nonprofit organization that educates the public about the oil and gas industry. Um, And so we are funded by voluntary contributions from the oil and natural gas producers here in the state of Kansas. So a portion of every barrel of oil sold on the first purchase goes into what is known as the Kansas Oil and Gas Resources Fund. That's our official name. And uh, we work under the name Kansas Strong. And we utilize that fund to do uh, media campaigns, um, like you see on radio, television, that educate people about the industry in the public sphere. Uh, we do uh, sponsorships. Uh, we have messaging opportunities at events that are going around, around the state to educate people. Then we do a tremendous amount of work in our public education system, working directly with teachers. In fact, over the past uh, few years, we've put over $2 million in resources through workshops and through actual uh, uh, resources into the hands of teachers uh, to utilize in their classroom. Um, and so we are all about educating people about our industry, the importance of our industry to the state of Kansas, um, and the importance of our industry to the United States as a whole. Is it kind of a PR challenge for the, for the oil and natural gas industry? Do you find, is that your biggest challenge these days is- I, I wouldn't say it's a PR challenge. Uh, it's a political challenge, okay. uh, more so than anything else. And so you have an, you know, you have a segment of the population that no matter what we do, um, they're going to love our industry. 
then you have another segment of the population that no matter what we do, they're going to hate our industry. And then you have a huge majority that is in the middle, what kind of what we call the messy middle um, out there, that people that uh, really don't have enough knowledge about our industry one way or another to really make a definitive, take a definitive viewpoint. And so what our challenge is, is how do we reach that messy middle? How do we reach those individuals that are open to having a discussion and educate them about our industry? Because the reality is, as most of the objections to us Um, are on the environmental front, but the reality is the oil and gas industry has done more than any other industry in the world to address environmental concerns. And so we're very proud of that, and we're more than happy to have that conversation in that public forum. The key is finding the right people to have it with. There you go. So the industry and the environment can and do go hand in hand. Oh, absolutely. I mean, if uh, you go out to uh, uh, the wetlands out here, Covera wetlands out there, what you'll actually see is a functioning oil field right in the middle of those wetlands. Uh, It has been there for uh, decades out there. There's absolutely no reason that our industry and the environment cannot coexist and work together. In fact, if you look at every parameter across the board, if you want to look at air quality, if you want to look at CO2 emissions, if you want to look at uh, 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 any of the markers that we've looked at in the past that are environmental concerns, we have done nothing but improve since the 1970s. And so we're moving in the right direction. Our industry takes it very serious uh, to address environmental issues, environmental concerns. Why? Because we care about, uh, we care about the planet. We care about our country. And here in Kansas, we have the largest conglomeration of independent oil and gas producers, which means we're not big oil. Uh, the average oil company in the state of Kansas has three employees. Uh-huh. Um, and so what that means is is that the producers that are here in Kansas, they're the people that are probably sitting next to you at the booth at the re- in the booth at the restaurant. They're the ones who are in your social clubs within your uh, communities. Uh, they're a part of the community, and they care as much about their community as you do. And so, you know, we are very proud of our record, and we're very proud of the steps that we've taken to address environmental concerns and that we continue to take as new technologies and new innovations come forward. In case you're just joining us, this is CEOs You Should Know. It's a monthly public service offering of iHeartRadio in Wichita. And our guest is Warren Martin. He's the executive director of Kansas Strong. Warren, you and I met at the River Festival a few months ago, and you were outside of something, the uh, Mobile Energy Education Van, is it? Yeah, it's our mobile energy education uh, truck that we take around. It's a big box truck um, that we take around, and uh, we use it at festivals and stuff like you were at, but primarily where we use it is in schools. And so you walk into our mobile energy education truck. It's got uh, several stations of hands-on games, activities, uh, and different things that educate people about the oil and gas industry. It's primarily geared uh, for a K through 8th grade level, uh, but I have found that people of all ages uh, really enjoy going through it and participating. It's just one of three of our ways of, of reaching into the educational system, yeah. but it's a, it's a great asset that we have to really communicate with the public. So can teachers contact you about scheduling an appearance of this Absolutely. Uh, and, and so if I quickly, I'll run down the three sure. programs that we have. Yeah, uh, please do. So where our education programs really begin is our education programs begin with our teachers' workshops. And so we go around and we do teachers' workshops where we invite particularly science and math teachers to come out K through 12. We have curriculums K through 12. Um, and we uh, uh, educate them on a new curriculum that meets all state standards for math and science that they can implement into their classroom. Um, you know, uh, uh, for instance, I know a school that we were talking to earlier, they're getting brand new textbooks today or this year. Uh, the last time they got new textbooks was in the year 2000. Wow. And so uh, a lot of these schools are are working with textbooks and content that is really out of date. So what we're able to do is provide them a supplemental content that they can plug in to teach the same lessons that are in the textbooks, but in a more up-to-date fashion that also explores the oil and gas industry along the way. 
So we start out with those teacher education workshops. And not only do we uh, teach the teachers the curriculum, but we also provide them a kit that has everything that they will need in the classroom to do the labs that are in that kit. Teachers got to love that. Oh, They've absolutely. Got to those, love that. those kids' kits are worth uh, at the elementary levels around $200 uh, oh. plus. Dollars. At the high school levels on the science side, they're worth almost $1,000. Wow. That we're giving to a teacher to go into the classroom and teach the content that uh, is in our curriculum and also as part of the state standards. Now, are you guys seeing some return on that? Are you seeing some interest in the kids and the quality of uh, of folks that may come to this industry as a result? I mean, well, that's what that's our hope, and that's right. our goal. Is uh, uh, is our goal is to open up uh, uh, students' eyes, and why is because I we all, our second program is called Petro Pros. And that's where an industry professional actually goes into a classroom and spends one class period uh, talking about the industry as a whole. And I do this on a regular basis. I've been in 40 uh, communities so far this year uh, uh, in this way. And so one of the ways that I start out is, is I'll walk into a classroom and I'll say, okay, um, how many of you think, and I hold my fingers just a little ways apart, how many of you think we're this close to switching from fossil fuels to alternative sources of energy? Here in Kansas, almost every kid in the room will raise their hand um, because we've done such a good job talking about alternative sources of energy that we've convinced our students that we're right on the verge of getting off of fossil fuels and onto renewable sources of energy. But if you actually look at the statistics, right now, wind and solar, if you took all the wind and the solar and you combined it together, it accounts for 0.8% of energy production in the world, 0.8%. Now, compare that to uh, oil and natural gas. Uh, fossil fuels as a whole accounts for 81%, and uh, oil and natural gas alone account for 54% of energy production in the world, oil and natural gas alone. So we are a long ways from making a switch and getting off of any type of fossil fuel and onto renewable sources of energy. So what does that mean? Because we've done such a good job convincing students that we're that close, we have very students who, very few students who are looking at our industry as a possible career field right. going forward. So what we're, our goal through the teachers, our goal through coming in classrooms, is to really show students that there are some great jobs and great opportunities in our industry, primarily because what we're going through right now in our industry is what's known as the great shift change. So in our industry, we have a ton of people in our industry who are 55 years of age or older. Then we have this vast void from 55 all the way down um, that, that is really a generation that is missing, that is there. So we are really desperate for brilliant minds to come into the industry uh, to fill those positions that are coming available. So there's great opportunities that are there for a student if they want to pursue a career in the oil and gas industry. And it's going to be something that's going to be around for the rest of their life. And so it's a great f career field to get into. So part of our uh, program is to educate people currently on where they're at. So when they're making choices at the ballot box, they have a full uh, understanding of the, situa of the situation and the issues. Part of it is to reach out to the young generations to say, hey, you guys have some brilliant minds, you have some great ideas, and we need your innovation in our industry so that we can utilize this resource in the most economical, efficient, and environmentally friendly way possible. We need your brilliant minds. And so that's where our education is really geared towards. Thank you for tuning in. This is CEOs You Should Know on iHeartRadio Wichita. And our guest this morning is Warren Martin. He is the executive director of Kansas Strong, the Kansas oil and natural gas producers. Warren, I was on your website a little earlier today. There's all kinds of great information on there. There's a ton of wonderful information. Let me ask you, if you were to narrow everything down and say if there were one thought, one thing you'd want the average listener to our program this morning to come away with, what would that be? What would that one thought be? I think the one thought that uh, I would want every listener to come away with is the fact that oil is good. Oil is good. And, you know, and a lot of times when we talk about oil and natural gas today, we talk about it in ways where it's a necessary evil. It's not. It is good. 
If you look at the history of the world and you look at what the innovation of this compact source of energy that we're able to transport, that we're able to move around, that we're able to utilize in such a variety of different ways from energy all the way to plastics uh, to polymers that are used to make over 6,000 raw materials that make millions of products that we rely on every single day. In fact, every single thing that you're wearing right now has petroleum in it. Everything that I'm wearing right now has petroleum in it for my glasses to my shoes. And when you look at oil and you look at all the parameters that are going on in the world, one, life expectancy is higher than it's ever been. Infant deaths are lower than they've ever been. Medical advances are at all time extraordinary levels. Uh, 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 environmental related deaths are at historic lows. We have uh, gross domestic products in nations around the world that are higher than they've ever been before. And it's impossible to look at any of those parameters without seeing how oil and natural gas has directly led to them being possible in our world today. Um, through air conditioning that has come in, come in to help protect us, to the plastics that are used to make environment, or excuse me, medical uh, equipment, machinery, uh, to aspirin. Aspirin is a direct product that comes from petroleum. That's where it's found. The gel caps that you take when you take medicines, they're petroleum-based. Um, when you look all the way down to shop, soaps, shampoos, uh, you look at all the way down to those resources, Oil and natural gas have given us the resources to have the dynamic environment that we have today. The environment, it has done nothing but improve humanity across the board. And I believe, uh, contrary to some of the environmentalists that would disagree with what I just said, um, I, I believe that humanity is a part of the environment. And a lot of times the environmental concerns do not consider humanity as part of the environment. They consider it as a plague to the mm -hmm. environment. And I believe that we are part of the environment, and there's absolutely no doubt that humans have flourished uh, since, the, uh, since the utilization of oil and natural gas began. That's a mind-boggling thought, but you know what? I, I really can appreciate that, and it's, it's fun to consider, and it's— I think you're right on. I think you're right on. So let me ask you a really simple-minded question. Warren Martin from Kansas Strong. Why do I see so many wind farms from border to border in this state? What's going on there? Is that politics? Um, I, I, think it, I think it's, to some people, it's politics. To some people, it's earnest desire to uh, bring in uh, uh, you know, renewable sources of energy, um, you know, I think that there's a whole smattering of different opinions that come together to put it in there. You know, Kansas just became the number one producer of wind energy um, here in the United States with uh, over a third of our electricity now being produced. Um, but when you're looking at wind energy, currently wind energy in the world accounts for 0.61% percent of electricity production in the, or energy production in the world. Um, and while you might drive around and see signs that say one-third of energy is now being produced by wind here in, in Kansas, that's really a misnomer. That's not, not exactly true um, because there are four energy categories. You have electricity, heating of homes and buildings, industrial, and transportation. Those are the four energy categories. The smallest of those four is electricity. And so only a third of electricity in the state right now is being produced by windmills. That's a significant amount, but that's only one-third of the smallest energy category out of four. And so we are a long ways away from uh, any type of uh, alternative source of energy replacing oil or natural gas. So, you know, we in the industry don't have a problem with alternative sources of energy. Um, uh, what, what we do, uh, and, and really you, they shouldn't be called alternative. Um, what they should be called is additional, there you go. additional sources of energy. Because an alternative implies that if I turn on this wind farm over here, then I can shut down this natural gas plant over here. And that's not happening. Right. What we're doing is, is we're starting up a wind farm over here, 
and we're keeping the natural gas plant online because when the wind starts blowing, we turn up the natural gas plant. When the wind's blowing, we turn down the natural gas plant. So what you have is you now you're duplicating systems and you're running you're ha you're having to man those systems at full capacity. So now you're paying for two systems for the same amount of electricity that you were getting before from just one. And so they're really an additional source of energy that is out there. Um, and if you look at the best estimates uh, that are put forward by the wind energy companies, they are predicting that by the year 2040, uh, 24, excuse me, by the year 2050, by the year 2050, um, as much as 40% of electricity in the United States will be being produced by all, uh, uh, additional sources of energy, okay, renewables. Now, that, that's still only 40% of one energy category out of four, and it's the smallest the energy smallest category. category yeah. So when you look at it, you know, uh, we don't mind other sources of energy as long as we're on a level playing field and we're able to compete on a level playing field. Um, and uh, But the, it needs to be able to stand on its own. It needs to be self-sufficient. It needs to support uh, what it says it can do. So... Warren Martin is our guest today on CEOs You Should Know. Warren's the executive director of Kansas Strong, the Kansas oil and natural gas producers. Warren, let's shift gears a little bit and just uh, ask you a question here. It's kind of out of left field, but on a personal level, what makes for a great day at the office for you? What's a great day at the office? Uh, today's a great day at the office. Uh, every day is a great day at the office. Uh, it's I have a, I have one of the most interesting jobs uh, that you can have. Uh, so I'll give you my schedule for today. Uh, today I started out talking with uh, Tallgrass Film Festivals about sponsorships and how we're going to be involved in the Tallgrass Film Festival. Um, then I came over here to do a radio interview with you. Uh, immediately following this, I leave and I head over to El Dorado where we're doing a commercial shoot for a new commercial series that we have coming out. And then immediately following that, I go over to the Dan Music Festival to set up for the Dan Music Festival and our sponsorships that are over there. And, uh, some, you know, uh, yesterday I was in the office and I was doing paperwork. And so I get to do a lot of different things and a lot of different roles with my background and be, uh, being a speaker, being an advertising guy. Um, in being an educator in those in those regards, I get to do a little bit of everything. So it's always interesting. And, um, you know, I'm one of those guys that I don't even give out my office number. I just give you my cell phone because it's about the only way you're going to find me. So <laughs> Rarely uh, in the office, yeah. always working, yes, right? Yeah. Well, um, that is, that's really interesting. You know, um, as far as your community involvement. You you touched on a couple things there. Dam Music Festival, of course, I met you at the River Festival. You've got some other things going on. Let's touch a little bit on the ways that Kansas Strong is involved in Wichita and other things yeah. you've got going on. And we're involved in the entire state, but you know, uh, here in Wichita, you know, we've been uh, a part of the Dam Music Festival. We've been part of uh, River Fest. Uh, we have supported um, uh, the Force. Uh, we've supported the uh, the Thunder, uh, the Wing Nuts, um, the NBC National Baseball yeah. Congress. Uh, you know, we get involved in a lot of those different ways. Ottoman Art, um, and so we're very supportive of community involvement, uh, community development. Um, uh, like I said, our producers are from this state. Yeah. They love this state, and they want to support this state. Um, and so not only uh, do our producers invest their money in the communities in which they live, we as an organization of the producers invest that money into the communities uh, where they live as well. And so uh, we, we try to be involved as much as possible all the way up into Kansas City, Topeka, over into Goodland and, and uh, uh, Garden City. Uh, you know, we, we try to cover the entire state. And so uh, we're very, very pleased to be a part of the, the different uh, events that we get to be a part of. Now, Warren, if somebody's listening this morning and wants to learn more about Kansas Strong, obviously you've got a website. Let's give that URL out so people can find you. Yeah, it's real easy. KansasStrong.com. Kansas is spelt out. It's all one word. KansasStrong.com. It's a great place to go and get the facts about our industry and get the facts about what we do as an organization. Also has contacts on there. If you have an event, if you have uh, opportunities for us to get involved in the community, we can't do everything, but uh, we would love to learn about the event 
events that you have and see how it might be a good fit for us as well as you. KansasStrong.com. Warren Martin, any uh, past frustrations or regrets, things you might have done differently Uh, over the years? I am the father of four daughters. So the answer to that is yes. Uh, no. Um, you know, I, I think that uh, uh, I don't spend a lot of time looking back. Right. Um, you know, I, my wife and I have had a tremendous life together. Um, and really, I believe that God has just kind of guided each step to bring me to this point. I could not have dreamed up a job that was more suited to the different uh, talents and skill sets that I have available. And so uh, I'm very blessed where I come from. And, you know, while there's things that I wish had gone differently in my past, I can honestly say that every single thing that has gone on in my life, I've learned from and grown from to become who I am today. So I cannot look back and say, I regret uh, what happened. That's awesome. I love to hear you say that. Any closing thoughts for any possible, let's say if there's any young people that are thinking about getting into this industry, if, if you were on an elevator with somebody like with me and I'm 22 years old in college thinking about getting involved in the oil and gas industry, what would you say to me in 30 seconds that get me interested in doing it? Well, the greatest thing about our industry is the variety of jobs that are available. So if you're a, some, a student that just came out of high school and you're done with school, you don't want to go to college, you don't want to go to trade shows, you know, as a 21-year-old, you can get a hazmat license and become a truck driver in the oil and gas industry with a high school diploma and in some places in the United States make six figures. Um, wow. as a truck driver. Um, here in Kansas, it's a little bit less than that, but you can make a really good living as a truck driver. And there's a lot of jobs in the industry that you can get with just a high school diploma. But if you're like a super student that really wants to go all out, you can get a doctorate's degree. You can get a master's degree as chemical engineer, uh, petroleum engineer, geologist, uh, attorney, um, you know, and so we've got really a job uh, peripheral uh, that is there where you can start with a high school education and you can go all the way up to as far as you want to go in the education ranks. And we will have a position that's uh, suited to your education level. That's exciting to know. I kind of wish I'd met you about 45 years ago. But <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's not too late. It's not, not too late. late. I can I can put you in a hard hat and teach you how to throw chains. So. There you go. Well, you <laughs> You know, thinking about a next step, you never know. It's been wonderful wonderful to have you in the studio today for CEOs You Should Know. Well, thank you for having me. It's been a great honor, and I uh, just really appreciate you taking time to uh, help people maybe gain a little more understanding about our industry. Warren Martin, he's been our guest this morning on CEOs You Should Know. Warren is the executive director of Kansas Strong, the Kansas oil and natural gas producers. We'll look to uh, kansasstrong.com for more information. And Warren, we'll talk to you later. All right. Thank you. That's another CEO You Should Know. Thanks for being a part of our community. And thank you for listening to this iHeart Wichita radio station.